to present, uh, managing clinical adverse events or sentinel events, uh, utilizing intelligent rule-based solutions. So fancy word for I'm going to talk to you specifically about uh, fall risks and some other, uh, just touch on some other uh, sentinel events. My first question is, now what the heck is a sentinel event? So I'm going to explain to you what a sentinel event is. Whoops. Oh, sorry, not that kind of sentinel. Don't know if anyone got that. That's a sentinel from the matrix. So a sentinel event. So this is as defined by the Joint Commission. I'm not sure too many people have heard of the Joint Commission. Uh, big in, um, in the US, North America. A uh, sentinel event is an unexpected occurrence um, that can involve a serious injury or death uh, or the risk thereof. Uh, so a sentinel, a sentinel event requires um, an immediate response uh, before the event, before an actual event is to occur. So the term uh, sentinel event and error or medical error are not necessarily uh, synonymous with one another. So uh, not all sentinel events uh, can occur because of an error and errors do not occur necessarily because it was or was not a sentinel event. So specifically sentinel events in uh, alarm management. So specifically we're going to go over uh, fall risk, why is it important, uh, how can it be um, uh, reduced, uh, other examples of a sentinel event before they happen, of course. So we're going to do that. Is uh, infant abduction. Uh, we want to, obviously, before uh, that happens, uh, before you get too far to trigger the necessary uh, people. Uh, patient elopement or uh, missing, uh, missing people, or that could include equipment elopement. Uh, also, and of course, uh, staff safety. You might have heard of that in North America, code white, um, with a, um, a violent patient. So, if we're going to go into this specific of uh, fall risk and how it can be um, reduced. So, why do falls happen, and why is it important to reduce them? So obviously, uh, I'm not going to go over them uh, too, too much, but uh, just the list of uh, issues that can um, assist in, in, in the falls, uh, which we don't want. Um, obviously, in a hospital environment, they could be weak on medication. Um, you know, in the evening or nighttime, the lights are dark. We don't want any obstructed, um, obstructed areas, and of course, um, you know, you got to clean the floors. You don't want them uh, slippery at all. So, um, I grabbed this from the uh, from the Joint Commission again. Uh, their their website. I just kind of uh, reduced some of the wording. Um, so, they found the the reasons for uh, fall risk in a more of a hospital clinical area is. Uh, misuse of uh, of equipment, um, orientation, uh, delayed medical care, just kind of some of these different um, uh, different issues uh, that they've uh, basically uh, come up with, Joint Commission with other organizations. And again, this is from the uh, uh, Joint Commission. Uh, their studies I uh, just kind of thrown in some of uh, of my own through my. Um, I've done it kind of about three uh, different uh, projects, three different hospitals are reducing fall risks. So adapting uh, intelligent bed alarms, and we'll kind of get into in, an intelligent bed alarm versus um, you know the the what you might see is a, a plug in the wall, the good old uh, 37 pin connector, which will just have a brief discussion on uh, installing the uh, specific alarms on bed exits or 
um, exit alarms for uh, on the wandering side uh, of things. Uh, standardizing on the um, notification or the smart beds um, equipment was another one brought up by the Joint Commissioner standardizing on um, like on, on the nurse call not having multiple versions thereof. And so on the, the projects that I have done, I've uh, I went around try to be as observant as I can be and um, noticed that they like to have quick identification. Uh, so if the clinician is, is walking around and they're not necessarily doing the one-on-one -on -one, um, interaction with that particular patient, they can immediately identify uh, if they are a high fall risk. There's a, a star, little star poster just outside the room identifying uh, a falling star, so uh, high fall risk, they could be um, have a uh, wristband, high fall risk wristband. Um, also, the you know the patients are free to walk. They have uh, could have uh, red socks on, rubberized on the bottom. But these are just quick identifications um, to see the uh, to determine which patients are of high fall risk. So our integration, we also have obviously have multiple uh, integrations to different uh, different areas. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our integration to Stryker. Uh, Stryker, we do have a, uh, a great relationship with them. We've some, done some joint uh, projects together. Let's go over this, uh, this slide really quickly. I was just talking about uh, Stryker's, um, you just call it the SUSE server. You can read here what, the, what it stands for. It's a web service, quick IP connection. And this reduces the need for the uh, 37 uh, pin connector. So the bed doesn't have to be, uh, well, without integration, it doesn't need to be uh, connected to the wall uh, to get that through the uh, nurse call system. So don't be overwhelmed by this one. <laughs> I'm just uh, showing you what it can do. Uh, so we have multiple uh, conditions uh, on the left side here. These are just kind of like a, a status uh, of the bed. We can uh, determine that the bed, uh, if the railings are in a certain configuration, the break is on, um, the bed height. Uh, we have this notion of, of awareness. We can use that as a trigger, kind of an on-off trigger. Certain patients have more leeway than others. Uh, you have multiple risks, uh, like low, medium, high risk. So we can use some of these different, um, uh, like the awareness to, as a, as a mechanism of, a, of an on-off. We'll get into some of these uh, in, a, uh, in a little bit. We can also use the, the weight as a, as a mechanism. That we can set a weight uh, that we don't want to send any notifications if the weight is between 50 and 400 pounds, so to speak so to speak, so that uh, you know, if you put equipment on it or if you do something, it's not gonna send a, a needless alarm. You can use that as a, a great trigger mechanism. Uh, of course, the bed alarming conditions, we still have uh, the, the bed exit. If someone tries to get out of a bed, we can trigger that. The bed has multiple zones. Uh, so you can have like an ICU patient uh, who may be hooked up to ventilators. If there's any kind of uh, movement, we can uh, notify, whereas if a patient's in more of a rehab environment, a lot of leeway, they can get, you know, can move around, get out of the bed a little easier, you can make the, the zone a little less, uh, less sensitive. Here's before I get into this one. So this is a simulation of a smart bed. Mario, you must uh, recognize this. Uh, this picture here, this is just a, a smart bed, a uh, little flash program, and we can show you that the railings can go down. We don't want this condition. Uh, usually this is called a restrained uh, condition, and it's um, a lot of hospital have rules that you don't, you don't want to restrain the patient. At times there may be, uh, you need an override mechanism, because at times you're gonna need to have the, uh, the patient almost in a restrained uh, restrained mode, so then, for example, they'd have one that was close to the uh, 
to the left. Have a break. We can. Uh, this is just. This is arming the bed. Um, we can set the bed height. You can bring the bed up. You can bring the bed down. And we use this program uh, basically to, uh, you know, to do testing, to do demos, to um, just to show you the the different areas of the the bed itself. Actually, we couldn't bring an eight foot, five hundred pound bed across the ocean here. And uh, so we have an empty bed, patient in it, and then these are the different zones uh, going through for the sensitivity of the load cell itself. So the, the workflow can be improvement over the, uh, the 37 pin connector which really would only give you a, a bed out or a, or a bed exit basically. Uh, so now we can monitor uh, you know, specific rails if you want a specific rail uh, to be notified if the left rail goes down you can be notified or we can set up a profile so we can have like a, a risk profile so we can have a high, high risk versus low risk uh, versus a medium risk so the high risk uh, we would have to say, you know, the bed must be in the lowest position, the brake must be on, uh, two head railings must be in the up position. If any one of those is out of, uh, keister is out of sync, then we can send that notification to the clinician to say, the bed 305 is a high risk patient and the, uh, the brake is on. So that's just telling uh, the clinician they need to go and turn on the brake to bring that bed into compliance, and that compliance is with your. Um, your, your policies that you would currently have for uh, patients in the bed setup. So obtaining fall risk information. We need to know how do we set up these beds if we have multiple risks uh, for the patients. So if the fall risk, can it be obtained from the ADT? So at times we can uh, get an ADT message from uh, sorry, uh, the file is inside of the ADT message. We can use that to uh, automatically create uh, profiles uh, in Connexon. So, so that, for example, a low risk patient uh, may uh, not have a height restriction on the bed, whereas a uh, high risk patient would have a restriction on the bed. So that we can use uh, the intelligence of that to notify uh, the right people under the right circumstances, under the right profiles. But at times, it's not even in the ADT system itself. So we've come up with a Connexol Fall Risk Updater. This does, um, um, like Dr. Nato uh, mentioned, uh, virtual call points. Uh, we can just configure a virtual call point, kind of ask you some quick questions. Uh, what bed is this? What is the new fall risk of this bed? And then it would automatically update that into Connexol. Uh, so we can do a manual process, um, and then even if there is some sort of a database that we would need to we possibly need to retrieve the fall risk from, uh, we could also have a mechanism uh, to do that, to uh, grab information from that database to automatically update the, uh, the profile. So the event is triggered on the bed, like when we saw the little flash demo there, if uh, one of the railings came down, We'd marry that with the profile, and if that fall, fell into a certain fall risk, then we can uh, we can notify uh, the correct people. As an example, I don't want to get too technical. This is technical. It's somewhat gets an example of a uh, our ADT message where it has the fall risk uh, into it. We'll go over what the over 50 points mean in a second here. So that is available in the HRS ADT. That can be uh, retrieved by Connexol and then in turn Connexol can communicate that to our striker or our smart bed component and automatically update the correct uh, bed profile with the correct followers.
So updating Cyrus. How is Cyrus calculated? It's not supposed to just show up magically in the ADT. So we have this uh, Mars uh risk uh, scale. So simple questionnaire asking the uh, pertinent questions. They uh, grade it up. If it falls under a certain scale, then that's the uh, fall risk that would be put into the put into the ADT. Uh, so patient would need to be continually uh, reassessed. Uh, maybe they came out of surgery. Uh, maybe they have an, uh, uh, an IV, um, a recently added IV, and that would automatically uh, bump them up on the scale. Um, or maybe they're improving. They can have a little more leeway. And of course, if, uh, if a patient does fall, even not in their room, they just walk in the halls, uh, that's an automatic high fall risk. It's, it almost bypasses the, the grading here. And don't be panic on this uh, slide either. And this is a, what I call it, a real-time bed status. Uh, this is, well, we have two notions of, a, of an alarm screen. We have a active alarm and a, and a presence. So we use the presence as kind of a, you can see the status of the entire floor by looking down on it. I'm not sure if you can see the colors very well. Uh, awareness state is a, a green bed. Occupy is a blue bed. And awareness means there's a patient in the bed. The bed's been properly set up and properly armed. And you can look here, it gives you the, the bed serial number if you, if you need to look that up uh, very quickly. Uh, we have the, uh, the risk that we've received from the uh, ADT is a quick uh, look up and we can tell what the um, bed exit zone was uh, configured for. So just a quick quick look for the uh, staff so they don't have to go back uh, to these rooms and oh, how's this bed set up? You can just look quickly here and they would uh, they would have that up there at their fingertips. Uh, bed disconnect uh, means that uh, so we subscribe to the beds. So bed disconnect lets us know that uh, we were seeing this bed, now we're not. That could mean someone just pulled the bed away from the wall, from the sensor of the bed uh, to clean it. Or they've actually, they could have taken that patient to a procedure right in the bed. They get out of the room, you lose contact with it. Uh, they come back, could be in a whole different bed. So it's just the same, you know, smart bed manufacturer comes in. And uh, to us, it'd still be room 403. We don't care what serial number it is, so to speak. And there's an example of our active alarm screen. So I just want to show, show you that this uh, snippet here, live from a site, that it's four beds, high-risk patients. They're, they are out of compliance. And all it's saying is it tells us the fault property. And all it says is bed exit arm. That just means the clinician set everything up in the bed. But they did not yet uh, arm the bed for uh, a possible bed exit. So as soon as they... So as soon as they go uh, back into the room, to the main panel, just enable bed exit. That alarm would be removed from the next off because the bed has now been brought back into compliance. Now, definitely don't panic on this screen. Uh, so, this is for the, uh, the Connexol engineers to, uh, uh, to work on. But I just wanted to show you how in depth that we can get with our. Uh, with our integration and just showing you we have uh, it's all rule based um, we have the, this is the profile screen where you can see there's multiple low high low high and this is when we get the information from the ADT it automatically updates the the risk profile in Connexol. Now for uh, setting up this is a, an example of a high risk uh, scenario uh, where we have we can have uh, and and or and not um, types of uh, logic scenarios. 
uh, setting up. Red just means they're ended. That just means the bed must be armed, there must be weight on the bed, and we must have a high-risk patient. Altogether, than any of the other blue scenarios, if any one of those, um, those conditions occur, then we're going to trigger that with the appropriate response. If multiple ones happen, like break on, and maybe it's not in the lowest height, you get a notification, and it would say, break on, low bed height, telling the clinician that both of these scenarios need to be uh, fixed and addressed. Maybe times when we need to kind of go back a step, talk about the virtual call point again. Uh, there may be a time when we need to modify the uh, the far risk. For example, if a patient uh, just recently came out of hip surgery, you wouldn't you wouldn't want the bed in the lowest height because they kind of have to kind of stand up a little bit. So after a hip surgery, you want the bed a little higher, uh, so we can kind of have a bypass mechanism for that. Or if the patients. Um, happens to be, uh, you know, they need to go in the Trendelenburg position. Uh, the bed has to be raised quite high and uh, tipped up at uh, a certain angle. Um, so that way um, that we can set up a, you know, a, the bed updater to say, uh, is the patient in Trendelenburg can say yes, so then we can ignore temporarily the uh, height and break requirements. So in summary, we, uh, we can use, we can reduce the falls by, um, reduce the falls uh, by, by doing more of a policy uh, enforcement um, with, uh, with the fall risk, in combination with the fall risk, there, you know, your site's current uh, fall policies and ensuring that uh, we get the not notifications out there. Uh, that the bed is out of, uh, you know, out of sync of what uh, is deemed safe. So of course we have uh, workflow, or advanced workflow can uh, be tailored to meet uh, your needs. Uh, about a week ago, a couple weeks ago, uh, the first site we did this uh, the patient's line of regional health center, Kansas kind of uh, take a pen smack it in the middle of a uh, map of the United States and you'll probably hit it. Um, I got a, uh, a call back from the uh, director of the fourth floor medical unit and I'm very happy with the system way it's working. Uh, first time in recent memory uh, that uh, falls have met or have been uh, lower than their um, you know, predetermined policies and, and requirements and um, Unfortunately, we haven't done an audit yet. Uh, we did a pre-audit before Connexon went in, Smart Beds. And so we're gonna work with uh, Smart Bed Manufacturer and we're gonna do another audit together and uh, see how the numbers have, uh, have come up. But uh, that is my uh, abbreviated presentation. So thank you very much.